Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. We are five days into the start of FC 25 and we're already running into a similar issue we had last year in FC 24. And yes, it has to do with extinct cards on the market. There are so many cards right now that are not on the market because their price ranges are too low and the community slash the market supply and demand thinks that they should be above those prices. And the problem is, it's been a long time since this game has been out already. I mean, kind of a long time, not that much, but long enough that it feels like it's dragging on. These players haven't been on the market. We've wanted to use them. We've invested in maybe some of them or packed them and we're holding them, waiting for the price range updates to sell them for possibly a higher price. I wanna talk about why EA are leaving these cards extinct, what's gonna happen when they update the price ranges as well, because that could be today, and how we can make coins off of that situation. We also gotta talk about the squad battle rewards impact on the market yesterday because prices went down a lot more than I thought they would, but they're yet still going back up again and a leaked player of the month SBC that on literally on EA's website, it says we're not going to get, but we have an official leak for a card that could be coming soon. Talking all that and more in today's video. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new. Now let's look back at yesterday's Sunday content first. There are a couple things to go over here that maybe you missed. And it's, interestingly enough, if you're on a low budget, we mentioned in two videos ago that bronze pack method is a very valid way to make coins on this game. This early access challenge one SBC that EA dropped yesterday is making BPM more profitable than ever. Go open those 750 coin packs and you can sell all the players from it, quick sell everything else, and you're bound to make coins. All bronzes they're selling right now, especially from certain clubs, you'll find random players selling for like four or five, 600 coins. Like some of these players here you see on my transfer list because they're used in that SBC and people are buying them. They're rare bronzes, non-rare bronzes, everything. It's selling good right now. So BPM is very profitable at the moment. And that SBC is not terrible to do if you have some players in your club. But that was one of the SBCs from content yesterday. Wanted to shout out BPM because it's still working pretty good. Now, also, we had Squad Foundations Liga Portugal. One thing that I have to keep reminding myself of with these cards specifically is, guys, these give extra chemistry boost. It is plus one, I think, to the league. League, um, of the squad foundations that they are representing. Fran Navarro here from Porto. Decent card, very cheap. It's an 82 and 84 rated squad. It's 19,000 coins. There is also a corresponding objective with the league foundations as well inside of the seasonal tab. You can see here, League of Portugal players. There's some okay cards in here. If uh, this arsonist card is probably the best one. And if I remember correctly, he had a couple of informs last year that went crazy with evolutions. And the way that card looks formatted very you know like a lot of 80 stats but very even across the line there that might be another great card to evo this year right back left back left mid he's got intercept anticipate press proven whipped pass and relentless and he's got three roll pluses on his card so maybe that's worth doing play 10 matches on squad battles with semi-pro difficulty with four liga portugal players so that's not super easy uh, but maybe after you get your 14 squad battles games played for the rewards, you get that one done for a little bit of a grind if you're Norwegian, maybe a Liga Portugal fan, and that is that. Now, the biggest piece of content yesterday was the Evolution for sure. Under the Evolutions tab, if you guys can't find these Evos, join me because it's, they're still a little confusing to get used to. Last year, we had two Evo tabs. Now we have like four. Anyways, under the Evolutions tab, we have another paid evolution and this is probably the card that i'm going to put into either, either basuma or benton core from spurs Fifty thousand coins for the octopus and it's all about blaze matweedy as you read in the description there it's a pretty big pace boost guys you can actually boost plus 12 pace it is 83 maximum the pace boost that you can get on this card but you take a center defensive mid you give them what is it uh intercept play style first touch and holding Plus plus roll. Roll plus plus for holding CDM, which I don't know if that's meta or not, but it's a roll plus plus, so I'm actually pretty interested in that. Now, I personally don't have anybody in my club that fits this Evo and makes it look cracked, but I'm sure you've seen this evolution rolling around on Twitter. A lot of people talking about this Ryan Gravenberch double evolution with the combination of the box to box Evo that just came out a couple days ago and the new Octopus Evo right here. So both the, this one, the Octopus 
and box to box you can combine to get that 85 rated grab and burge and my question that i posed on twitter slash x yesterday was if this card was in packs and on the market like a gold card with those stats four star four star with a roll plus plus how much would he be? Would he be more than 50,000 coins? And comparing him to Tonali, to Declan Rice, other Premier League center defensive mids, Tonali is like 70k. I think Graven Birch's card is on par with him, maybe a little bit better, and Liverpool links. I honestly think he would be more than 50k on the market. So for me, maybe that's worth doing. If you look, want to look at it that way, 50k is still a lot of coins for this early stage of the game, though. I totally feel that. This is one for me, guys. My advice with this evolution is... Just wait. Wait. We have 20 days until you can unlock it or before it goes away. You have 20 days to unlock it. 20 days from now, you'll be able to trade, get those coins up through many different ways, and maybe there'll be other evolutions out that you could chain. As we saw with that um, um, Gravenberch, I almost said a Wijnaldum, another Dutch midfielder from Liverpool, not at Liverpool anymore. Not the same player at all. But you can see that the chain evolutions go crazy this year. Now, last year, chains were very popular as well. But this year, they maybe are even better with the new evolution system. So I would wait on this one. Just wait it out. See what happens. And we'll go from there. If you find somebody that you like right away and you have a lot of coins, then I would say go for it. But I'm going to hold off on this one for now until... I get some more coins, and I think maybe some of you guys will as well. Also want to point this out. While we were playing Rush yesterday with Zwei, Hani Mukhtar, and Terrorizer, there was a new Rush mode that came out, um, and it was called Slow It Down. And it's not actually up in the game right now, but another Rush event, nobody's going to be mad about this. This Rush event actually, it said max 80 pace, I believe. It was all about using players who were slower, plenty of great banter under that EA tweet, but um, it was not working at all, and one of the requirements was not there either, but under 80 pace isn't that crazy, to be completely honest, like, if it was under 60 pace, then it would probably be a little more interesting, at least in my opinion, but it sounds like we have another rush mode that is going to be coming out soon if EA can get it fixed, and they took it down pretty quickly, um, which I guess is a good thing, but we're going to have to watch out for that, because like we've been saying, the new rush modes, as they come out, there's going to be a lot of interest in that now for me i feel like i'm less motivated to play rush at the moment for rewards sake because i got this objective done yesterday got the 84 double which was shocking but i got it done uh, waiting for this to refresh on the weekly and then hit, hitting rush again would be fun now it's of course very fun to play rush at all times but in the early game early access like this still very very important to try to maximize the rewards that we can get and rivals is kind of that next set of rewards that we can go to so that's probably where I will be putting a lot of my gameplay time until Thursday and maybe sprinkling a little bit of squad battles as well. Now, speaking of squad battles, we got to talk about the market, guys. Squad battle rewards. We got to respect squad battle rewards, man, because I did not understand how cracked some of these rewards were. Yeah, you know what? 85 plus player packs in Elite 3. That's really what hurt the market yesterday on a lot of the elite tier, top tier players that we were looking at to invest and make some coins off of. But it also, man, the pack weight this year, I keep coming around to this. I keep seeing so many people pack great stuff. And I know that the rewards are better this year across all levels for the top tier players. If you get Elite 1, you're getting compensated pretty fairly compared to previous years where it felt like you could get absolutely shafted. We watched somebody open Elite One Squad Battle Rewards yesterday. They packed Jude Bellingham and somebody else who was like 50, 60,000 coins and the other rest of the untradeable pack that was a part of the rewards. Sorry, not the untradeable pack. It was the 75 times 10 that was really cracked. De Bruyne, that's who they got. It was De Bruyne and they packed Jude Bellingham from... Uh, their packs. I was like shocked. I mean, sure, not everybody's going to get that. But if you look at how the market moved, a lot of people were getting good stuff, especially from those 85 plus tradable packs in those rewards. Remember Militao last night was like 150,000 coins on the video. He went up to 160 right before rewards. Look at what happens when rewards hit. He absolutely tanked all the way down to 138,000 coins. The market right here, like two, three hours after squad battle rewards hit a low point, had a little bit of a rebound and then went down again at content. But since then, we have had prices rising again. This is what I want to show you, though. Those 85 plus packs and people really grinding squad battles this week for the points is where the market was impacted the most because this Militao absolutely tanked, right? He's, of course, 85 rated, so he was in the 85 rated packs. This Victor Yikeres card, 84 rated, 
This is his graph. He, yeah, sure, he dropped a little bit after squad battle rewards from about 10, 12K back down to like 10,000 coins. But then he skyrocketed. As everything else was going up on the market, so was he. And that's kind of how a good amount of graphs looked yesterday too on cards that were 84 and below. Now here's another one, Salah. Another example here, right? Salah, boom, from 340 down to 316. And then bang, right back up, as you can see, big buyback after content like it's been happening the past few days. He's still right around 340, 350,000 coins. His price is doing good, but the graph didn't quite go like we thought it was going to yesterday. We thought it was going to start low-ish and then continue to go up. But in reality, it was like it dropped and then it rebounded back up. So your rises don't look as insane, especially if you bought back here, which I did on a couple of cards. I'm not losing coins at the moment, but I'm not making as many as I would have liked to just because you didn't have an overall rise on the market. You had a drop and then a rise. So your overall kind of market change isn't as much. So we got to respect the squad battle rewards, guys. And it makes me actually think and honestly want to ask you guys too. drop down in the comments what you think. But I'm a lot more interested in playing squad battles this next week, especially because it's only 14 games and seeing how many rewards people got yesterday that were actually worthwhile playing, not even just trying to get like elite or whatever, but just get like gold two, gold three. I got gold three squad battle rewards and I feel like I played not even like eight games of, of that. So I know there's gonna be more people on the game this Friday with the full standard release, FC25 being fully out, and that's gonna impact how many games you have to play. But I mean, next week too on Sunday, we're gonna to have to look for this same sort of thing. Even Inform Messi went from 330 down to 296 and is now back up to 320 to 330. Prices really dropped yesterday and I was not expecting that. So going forward from here, we will respect those squad battle rewards 100%. But it is still good to see that prices are continuing to rise back up even after they had some dips um, We're talking about the gold meta cards here the higher rated ones like that Militao is back up to 150 uh, Kyle Walker had a dip. He's going back up now a little bit too. You know Rolfo is one actually Interesting enough thinking of the Liga F women's Barca team Quapatri Guijaro is flying and there's some kind of you know random outliers from yesterday's market as well that I've noticed 40k this card is booming I'm pretty sure she was 30,000 coins who is pumping this card man no shot is she extinct 45,000 coins can we get a VAR check on this graph I need to see this graph right now who's got this in their like tier list or, or something man yesterday Guijaro was 24k 24,000 coins and she has absolutely exploded. This is making me want to buy a roll flow because if you're putting Guijaro in your team, maybe it's the long ball pass plus that's um, it's got her card going up and, and maybe that's part of the, the thing. Is Ederson's card going up too because of this? But it makes me want to buy Rolfo. Oh wow, Rolfo is flying too. Rolfo was just 24,000 coins. I picked one up on a bid. I might have to pick up one or two more. Let's see if we can just plop a bid down at 25 or something and win it while we're doing the video. I doubt it. But something's going on there with Liga F players, and it feels like the Rolfo situation last year all over again. If you remember, you remember. Okay, guys, let's talk about what we came here to talk about today, and that is price range updates because holy smokes, do we have a lot of cards that are still extinct, and it feels like the number of extinct cards kind of grows every single day. Another player gets close to being extinct. A lot of you guys, maybe you're still wanting to do Darwin Nunez or you're wanting to do Diogo Dalo in one of those beginner evolutions that we've had now for like three or four days on the game and you haven't been able to do it because the cards are extinct. We got to start being really, really careful with these guys in my opinion. These are overdue for upgrades. Now, first of all, I want to touch on the subject of why does EA let these cards sit? Why, why do they not like... Why do they keep them extinct and why do they not update their prices? It's got to be to create some sort of hype, right? That's that's the only reason that I can come up with. Like, we know that EA monitors the market all the time. We've actually had a price range update already this year. Victor Jokerez was 10,000 coins. He got his price range updated to 40. That's the only price range update I know of so far, apart from maybe like a hero or an icon or something like that. This is like one of the only gold cards that had, has had a price range move. So why is he getting a price range update? but nothing else is. Well, what it really tells me is, at the bottom line, the system that EA uses to update these price ranges has not changed. It's still the exact same one that it was last year because this is the same problem that we had last year at certain points of the year all the time. Prices 
would be extinct for days upon days. Sometimes it was new promo cards that wouldn't be on the market for like a week. And we're like, EA, what is this? Let us use the promo card, right? It just feels like it's a, um, a negative lose-lose situation for both sides, for us who want to use the player and for EA. I don't know. Maybe it creates more hype and they sell more packs and that's why they do it. I don't know. At the same time, though, I think one of the reasons why EA like to keep prices extinct on some cards is because they know people are going to hold the cards, they're going to snipe them, and they're going to lose coins. That's going to happen, guys, on some of these cards that are extinct right now. Not all of them. Like we've talked about, Phil Foden, I think he's going to go above 110 thousand coins you look at like Musiala is 120k if Musiala is 120k Phil Foden is going to be over 110,000 coins you look at William Saliba if um Rudiger's extinct at 200 and Militao is 150k this card's going to be more than 150,000 coins Jude Bellingham as well there's plenty of cards on that middle of the high tier that are absolutely worth more than what their price ranges are at but there's some that worry me a little bit. Destiny Udogi is one of those. I know Van de Ven is so crazy and there's a lot of people that want to use him, but this is an 82 rated card that a lot of people still are able to get their hands on right now. Now, am I saying that Udogi is going to be 5k after his price range updates? I don't think he's going to be 5,000 coins, but could he be like 10, 12k? Yes, probably. I think that's what most people would expect him to be at, but the longer that this goes on, some of these cards here, like Anaki Williams, is he going to be more than 10,000 coins after his price range updates? I'm a little bit more worried about that one, especially, guys, again, considering the pack weight that we've seen this year. That's one of the things that just worries me a little bit is, like, I see so many of Jude Bellingham's. Jude Bellingham's getting packed. It's crazy. Phil Foden's getting packed as well. I'm not worried about Jude because I know he's going to have a higher price in 240K. But we got to talk about some of these cards here that are on the bubble. I think if it's a lower rated card, you probably want to sell them and not, you don't want to hold on to them for too much longer. Even maybe selling the card at their max price like I've done multiple times. I've packed Nunez twice, sold them at 8K, packed Declan Rice. He's a higher rated one, but I don't think he's going to go too much over 20,000 coins. So I've sold him. That's this kind of stuff that you want to be careful with at the moment. And I think it's probably better off to sell if it's lower rated and it is extinct. Just my take. That's just my take. I don't like risking it the longer that we go with cards being extinct. Now, the other thing we have to talk about here is when the prices get updated, the fluctuations that you have. We kind of already saw it with the Yikerez, right? It was a little different because it was in the early game. But after Yikerez's price got updated to 40,000 coins, he got listed straight down so fast. That exact same thing is going to happen. Right now, what I'm doing on Footbin is I'm searching about all the extinct gold cards, price low to high, right? All the ones that have a zero price that are golds. When these prices get updated, which I should mention could be today on Monday because Mondays have been days when EA have updated price ranges in the past. I don't know the system. They, they hop into the office on Monday and say, oh, shoot, these cards are extinct. We should, I don't know. I don't know how it works, to be completely honest. We know there's some sort of system and computer involved, but we don't know how manual or automatic it is at the same time. Anyways, I would watch these cards today because if price ranges get updated, there is going to be people, depending on how high the price is updated to, there will be a flood of listings straight away as these cards become unextinct because the people that do have them are going to be undercutting and try to sell and make those coins. That's the thing you have to think about. Or maybe even you or somebody who has an extinct card that you're holding on to waiting to sell. The best time to sell it is immediately right after the price range updates. But then if you don't get the lucky sell, then the price is just going to drop on that card because so many people are going to flood the market. And that's where you sometimes see player prices that were extinct at, let's say this McAllister is 10,000 coins, right? Maybe his PR goes to 25K. People list him all the way back down. He'll probably be like 12,000 coins within a half an hour of his price range getting updated. There's going to be so much supply and so many listings for a card like that. Now, that's just an example. I don't know what that card is going to be valued at. That's just a guess. But you just, you got to be careful with these guys. So I'm just saying if you have a low rated card or if you think it's going to be near that price of where it's actually extinct right now, you're better off just selling it right now and taking those coins. But if it's somebody like Saliba, Rudiger, Bill Foden, Jude Bellingham, I'd also maybe throw Chiesa into this. Yeah, Nico Williams as well. So many people want to try out the Nico Williams, kind of like Cole Palmer, big upgrade. Hype at the Euros, 93 pace with Rapid. Who doesn't want to use this card, right? He's going to get listed down, and then he's going to get bought back up. That's the opportunity to make coins with this, is if you time the low. First of all, you kind of have to find a card that people actually want to buy, like this Nico Williams would be a great one to keep watch on. You just kind of have to keep an eye on their card, watch their 
uh, listings. Usually it happens within the first like hour to two hours because people who listed right away, who were on their card didn't sell when they relist. Sometimes they list for open bid and they undercut just to try to get the card out to take their coins, take their profits and stuff like that. So it's usually in the first couple of hours after the price range gets updated, you see that big dip, the, the card just goes down, 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 and then the supply and the demand kind of switch it up and there's so much listing, right? But then after that, people realize, okay, this card's getting too cheap or it's cheap enough where I want to buy it. I want to go out and use it. And from there, you start to see the prices start to trickle back up. And that is the investment opportunity. The best time to do this is not with gold cards, but as we go throughout the year, when there are prices that are extinct on promo players, this is one of the most fun ways to make coins. If you time it right, you can buy a card in that dip after a price range update, and then it skies and you make a ton of coins. That is literally how I made 900,000 coins on one foot birthday of Iran last year. He was extinct, got listed up, went down, and then rebounded crazy high because people wanted to use him, and boom, made a ton of coins. That sort of thing can happen on these gold cards in the early game too. Just got to be careful because there's going to be more supply on a gold card than there is a promo card. So that's the whole situation there. I I hope EA update price ranges today and we get to make some coins off of that because we will be there for um, some trading and some investing quick flips on some of that stuff if the opportunity presents itself. So I wanted to really talk about that because I know that's one of the biggest problems right now on this game is those prices that are extinct and we all just want those cards to be on the market to a use them or to be actually make some profit off of those. Now I want to look at today's content on Monday as well what we expect to see today. It's got to be the upgrade pack SBC day, right? We saw the pack code added on Friday and the 77 times two should be coming today to set up our first upgrade pack on maybe unlimited repeatable. Maybe they'll only let us do it 10 times. I think last year during early access, we had a 78 times two that we can only do 10 times or something like that. A 77 times two is in the code. I think that'll be a part of our Monday content today as well, as well as maybe this isn't just for a today shout. It's for a sometime this week shout. This player of the month, Taram card it's actually been this picture is real i believe a lot of people were posting it i don't know where it originally came from yesterday but it's him literally holding the player of the month trophy with the ea logo on the side of it and of course inter are not sponsored by or um licensed by ea so that's lombardia fc here him with the inter badge on his kit there which is a little laughable a little funny but it is what it is but that's his card man and you look at those stats that's a cracked card. It's a nice plus two over his gold card. Now, the thing is, is this just for show and for him to keep? Or are they actually going to drop one of the game? Because if you look at EA's website, which you know what? Let's pull it up right now. POTM EA Sports. Uh, it's maybe not going to show up. That looks kind of bugged. Anyways, if you pull up the website, it literally says on the graphic on EA's website that there's not going to be an in-game integration for the August Player of the Month winner. Well, I guess that's not happening or this card is just for show. I don't know, but this could be coming in the next day or two as well. Since we've already had the Holland, then why not give us the Taram? And that could be a nice card if priced correctly. Watch out for your Lombardia FC, AKA interlinks, maybe a Barella, maybe a Bastoni, a couple of those other, maybe French uh, Syria cards as well. Maybe just French cards in general could be something to monitor with uh, the market right now after we maybe get this SBC. Also, if it's 85 rated, you maybe need to think about fodder as well, but this one should be a bit cheaper. And if you're going to look at fodder, I think I'd look at 86s because everything else is just up so much. And these cards, like, sure, they are up. Like, how much was Schuler? Schuler was Friday. I guess we can't see because this is footbin and the prices don't go all the way back to last Wednesday. But she's kind of been around 6 to 7K, which is where the 86s are. I don't think this SBC would be too much. So whether it comes today or not, we don't know. If you want to stock a little bit of fodder, you could. Uh, but you'd really be banking on SBC coming. So I'm not going to invest for that one at all, but that one is there. Oh, really quickly, we do have another evolution update for an already leaked one, that center attacking mid Evo, which, you know, I keep expecting to see dropped in the game. And then we have other evolutions instead of that one. There's a new requirement added, max roll plus one. So I believe Kudus actually does not fit this evolution anymore. And it's yet again, another paid Evo. I doubt they'd go two days back to back with paid evolution. So that might be later on this week. So watch out for that one. And uh, yeah, I guess we're still waiting on that potential rush event that has been added to. We're kind of in this learning stage of like watching the content, trying to monitor it and figure out what is EA's kind of like schedule going to be. Now, I don't think we can look at this week and say, oh, this is going to apply to every single week going forward in terms of what the content looks like. 
because EA always change things up, but you know, they do like to do things pretty consistently week to week, year over year. Mondays have always been upgrade pack days, which is why I'm pretty confident that 77 double will come today since it is in the code. And we should have some decent market rises today as well. I didn't mention it when we were talking about the market, but I'll mention it here at the end. I still think that the meta market is doing pretty good at the moment. It seems like there's a lot of demand. There's gonna be a lot of demand for people to play rivals. As I mentioned earlier in the video, Rivals is really going to kick off in the next day. I think it's already been kicking off. People have been playing it the last couple of days after doing squad battle games. So there's going to be good gameplay demand. You just don't want to hold some of the cards that you bought for your team too long. Maybe I'm talking about a Neymar. Maybe I'm talking about somebody uh, like uh, Hyunmin Sun or that Militao as well. Neymar's back up to 200,000 coins, which is nice. After he was like 180 yesterday. But I think once we get to Tuesday, once we get to Wednesday, there's going to start to be some drops on the market once again because people are going to get worried for a promo Friday and undoubtedly a time where EA is going to drop the biggest packs of the year in the store for the first promo of the year. So that's the next big thing that we're going to be talking about with the market. But I think the market should do well today. Last thing I want to mention, team of the week out of packs investments. It's a little late to get in on these, especially because today's Monday team of the week comes out on Wednesday. We'll probably have leaks for team of the week tomorrow on Tuesday. But I just wanted to touch on this because it's something to watch for every single week here in the early stages of the game. Luis Diaz, right? People think he could get an inform after the performance on Saturday. And he was 63k. 63k um sorry he was 57k during the game went up to 70 came back down to 60,000 coins he's been slowly rising ever since you can see now that he's almost back to 70,000 coins i don't know if there's a whole lot of ceiling here to invest maybe he goes up to like 75,000 coins and if he gets leaked to be in team of the week he could jump to like 80 to 85 that would be your exit point in my opinion guys i would not risk it to hold on any longer there's a lot of people investing here kind of the same thing with rafinha they're both actually funnily enough 69 70 000 coins but that's kind of the situation if you see those two going up and that's something to watch for every single weekend especially in the early times of the game we've already seen it a lot of the cards that are in team of the week one have their gold cards, of course, which haven't been packed very much. They are very, very high in price. Ooh, lazy sale on Lauren James, 37,000 coins. We love that. Guys, list for lazies. The market's doing good. That's where some of my coins are at the moment. Just some popular gold cards. Lazy listing them above three to 4,000 coins above. Like I have a roll fold that I bought for 24, 25, listing her for like 30. I maybe should list a little bit higher now because um, I, I see that her, her price is going up, maybe in correlation with, with that Guihara. But the mark is still great to trade with. If you need any investment help or ideas, catch that video from a couple of days ago with the best trading methods right now in FT25 because the market's still hot. Time to make coins, time to grind, and get those rivals games in today as well at least starting that process to get those rewards on thursday if you enjoyed today's video guys drop a thumbs up on it comment below if you have any questions and of course subscribe if you're new have a great week great start to your weeks with this monday and i will see you guys in the twitch stream today it's been late for the count see you there peace out